You made a very wise decision joining in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, because our special guest today, Ted Karras, great friend of the show. And this guy is a very special human being. There's no question about it. Doing a great job at the pivot position, the center and the offensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals, making a big impact on the football field, in the locker room, in the community. He's got a foundation related to since he hats uh, listen to some of the good, great things he's doing there and he's uh very very impressed and confident with how the offensive line is going to play and how the football team as a whole will be performing this upcoming season nobody better to listen to and get information from than ted karras You're in the trenches once again with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, coming to you from our outstanding studios. And to equal the studios or exceed the studios being outstanding, we have an outstanding football player and even more outstanding human being, none other than the man, the icon, Ted Karras. Welcome to the show, my man. Thank you so much, Dave. Glad to be back in the trenches with you. There we go. In the trenches. That's where... That's where you 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 dominate. That's your domain right now in the trenches for the Cincinnati Bengals at the center position. And uh, so how's it going? You guys are finishing up the mandatory mini camp. You know, you've had OTAs and you've been down there grinding, man. You've been down there working hard. How do you feel it's gone? I think it's gone great. I think we've had a very productive spring. Um, you know, we want to finish up strong with one more practice. And then, you know, we got about a five, six week break. Uh, you know, everyone getting right, going to their respective wherever they want to go and kind of resetting, getting ready for an eight month journey together. So I think it's been a great spring. Um, it's great to have, you know, I love the spring because everyone's together, you know, the pressure of a game looming, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And, you know, once we get back, camp starts, it's on. So we've savored the time and uh, going to have a good summer and get ready for the fall camp. You know, that's where the bonds start now though you know every off season now for mini camps voluntary and then and then uh, mandatory what what is it uh how do you how do you establish those bonds ted what do you do or what does the team do to kind of have everybody even grow closer together well i think just attendance and and uh you know showing up every day to work what we want to do is earn each other's trust like my goal is to trust the men around me and build their trust in me and, you know, that that can be something as little as just being there every day. And that's where it starts. And then you can, you know, graduate to, you know, we go out together. We have fun around the town. But, sure. we have, you know, but you know, the football stuff comes first. And we really just want to gel together. What's great about this year is, you know, last year was a big onboarding spring. We had four new alignment. We kind of had to, you know, everyone had to learn this offense. Where now this year we just brought in one, and he's a real – Real easy install. Orlando is a great culture builder, too. Just an amazing energy guy. I'm really excited he's here. But I think that having that continuity with everyone coming back really is an advantage. And I think we've taken advantage of it so far, but we're going to need to play to it uh, come September. Jonah Williams uh, made the uh, made the, the, the mini camp, obviously. And, uh, and he had a lot to say, you know, uh, being interviewed big time about you know, what's going on with moving from the left tackle to the right tackle with the acquisition of Orlando Brown and, and he handled himself great. And one thing that struck me uh, when I was talking to him, just kind of one-on-one privately, you know, he was very, very appreciative of you reaching out to him and, you know, just being there for him and showing that type of leadership. And, you know, neither one of us surprised by it, but he was, he was very, very appreciative of what you, what you did in that regard. Yeah, no, that's a complicated situation, too. And I'm glad it's all working itself out. You know, this is a business. We can never forget that. And right. uh, you have to do what's right for you and for your family. And I think that, you know, that time was good. I'm very glad to have Jonah back in the building. He's a big part of our unit and our offense and our team as a whole. Uh, I was excited to see him. Um, he looks great. He's looking big and strong. And, you know, he had, a, he had his child this offseason. So, Right. There's a lot of things that went into that. I'm glad it's all working out. And, you know, it's going to be a big fall for all of us. And we need, you know, everyone to be at their best. And I think he's looking great, ready to go. He's rehabbing from his knee uh, knee injury. And uh, LC is rehabbing from surgery as well. Uh, but w- with 
other than those two guys, you have a lot of people that are participating. And I'll tell you, Ted, I mean, I know you've probably been part of some outstanding offensive lines during the course of your career in New England and Miami, but this one's got some depth. I mean, there's a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, a lot of National Football League football. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty deep. Absolutely. I mean, you can, you know, obviously we have, you know, the four incumbents, but, um, and the five incumbents, but we have Jackson Carmen's played a lot of great ball for us. Max Sharping is a, you know, a double digit starter in the, in this league. And, yep. you know, we, we can never take that for granted. I think that this is the deepest we've been, uh, and obviously deeper than last year, but, you know, we can never have enough bodies at O-line, you know, hopefully knock on wood, we all stay healthy, but, at some point, some guys are going to need to play, and we have the guys to, you know, come in and fill in and, and get wins as they pro as they proved last year. I know uh, Frank Pollock is is a uh, is a great teacher of uh, technique and um, just the repetition. You know, it's 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 time on task basically, and it just brings me back to uh, I had an offensive line coach that was out of that same mold, Jim McNally and watching you guys work. It's almost like a flashback and man, you guys, you guys grind, man. All these different, the skill guys are going from one drill to another, taking a little break here, a little break there. You guys are just in that end zone, just working, man, working steps, hand placement, everything, you know, keeping the pad level down, all the, all the, uh, all, all the basic fundamentals. I mean, you guys work hard. I mean, Frank, Frank gets it done, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And Frank does a great job training us, installing the offense, um, you know, coming up with great runs. I think he came up with some amazing, you know, run plans towards, you know, at the end of the in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, O-line more than any other position, I believe, is a repetition position. So, um, you know, we need to get as many reps as we can because it's a it's you know, it's pretty much a three, three, four second play. So, you know, you have to if you can do the certain series of steps, hand placement, pad leverage correctly, you're going to have way more success, you know, having as many reps as we do. You know, you haven't obviously uh, worked against the defensive line in a, in a physical fashion yet. That comes with training camp. and But, boy, there's some depth on that side of the football as well. I mean, that uh, that defense defensive unit, you watch them work. I mean, everybody belongs. It's th – this football team – 53-man roster, it's going to be a, a, a heck of an accomplishment to roster on this football team. You know? It's a, it's going to be competitive. I mean, there's 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 dogfights going on at every position group, man. Absolutely. This is a very deep team. Obviously, our defense is, uh, I think, outstanding. Um, they, you know, I think as an offense, we need to not squander. We, I think we squandered some very, very good defensive performances last year. So that's one of our goals this year. You know, our defense is going to play everyone tough. Uh, and we need to do our part and put up as many points as we can. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of a lot of roster battles in camp. Um, you know, everyone everyone feels that. This is a very deep team. There's no, you know, nothing's guaranteed in this league. It's kind of a fresh slate. We're coming in at training camp, you know, as a team that was knocked out in the AFC Championship game. Obviously, that's not how we want to end it. But we have a we have a very very deep roster. Credit to the to the front office and to Zach for bringing in not only talented players but the quality of men that these guys are. Um, and obviously there'll probably be some tough decisions, but you know, when we roll in, uh, you know, that first, first, second week of September, you know, we're going to have uh, a, a really serious team. So is that the biggest takeaway, Ted, you know, when the season ended and you reflected back on the 2022 season, um, full, you know, take full advantage of every opportunity. Don't squander anything because this team is, is so talented. Is that, is that one of the takeaways? I mean, or w when you assessed, the 2022 performance um, offensively, what came to mind other than that? I think we need to start faster. You know, I'd like to, you know, we, you know, we started 0-2 and, um, and never, that's never putting yourself in a position to succeed, especially down the stretch in a, in a tough AFC with a lot of teams that could come out of this conference. Obviously the Chiefs won it all um, and they're, you know, they're everyone's target, but we need to, you know, we need to start faster than we did last year. Uh, obviously we went on that great stretch 10 game, 10 wins in a row. Um, but we just need, probably just need to start that sooner. And, you know, obviously that comes with just a little bit better preparation uh, and performing our best when it counts the most. Uh, and I know those games were tough and one possession games, but that's what this league is. It's a very, very fine line between winning and losing. So no, we can't squander anything and we need to, you know, never take anything for granted and go out every game, you know, knowing that, you know, we, we need this one.
So you you mentioned like a six week time frame here after uh, after mini camp, uh, mandatory mini camp ends tomorrow, end of July, toward the end of July, you go to training camp. Um, Want to stay physically and mentally sharp. How how do you do that, Ted? What what's what's your approach as a veteran player in the National Football League? I mean, you want to you want to uh, you know rest a little bit, get away from it, but not totally. I mean, you got to keep yourself in some kind of peak uh, physical condition, then keep the mind right. Do you, do you throw in some, uh, some, some tape to take a look at from time to time? How do you stay fresh? How do you stay sharp that way? Yeah, I'll just watch the games from last year. Um, that's what I'll do again. Another round of just kind of watching ourselves, you know, things you can improve on in your, in your own game. Um, and just kind of just re-familiarize yourself with, with the flow of a game. But yeah, this isn't, this isn't like, you know, late February where you can, you know, really take a rest. This is, you know, it's on here come July 25th. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're all training hard. There's not really, it's not like a physical rest period where, you know, February after eight months of playing football, you know, you can, you can let your hair down for, for two, three weeks, but you know, that's, that's, we can't afford that here. Now we, we got to be ready to go, you know, day one, when we get in um, because, you know, we have a goal to achieve and I think everyone feels that. So it's more of a serious, it's a vacation still, but it's a serious one. Do you, do you head out? Do you, do you go anywhere? Do you uh, spend some time, you know, with family, uh, like vacationing as such? Uh, not, and, and I remember, I, I remember going to Cape Cod with my family and running every day, <laughs> get up in the morning and run, you know, the couple okay. of miles, whatever. I mean, is that what the, the MO is? I have no vacations planned this spring or this summer. Um, it's just going to be kind of, you know, getting my house right. You know, we're going to have a lot of visitors this year. Very blessed, you know, to be an hour and a half from home. Um, but getting, getting things right. I want to, you know, this is an old Belichick adage, but I think it holds true is just when, when training camp comes, you want to put everything in your life in a drawer, basically, um, make sure that everything's taken care of before you take that first, you know, before you do your conditioning test really. And because you know, for the next seven, eight months, it's all about football and that's, you know, that's what we're judging on. That's how we provide for our families. So, you know, I'm going to take this time, you know, get my houses right you know, get everything in order in my life. Um, and obviously stay in, in peak physical condition, but no, no, no beach vacations for me this year. I gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, th- this football team, the coaching staff is virtually intact from when Zach started, uh, his tenure here with the Cincinnati Bengals. A lot of veteran players have played with each other for a time frame now where there's a lot of familiarity between players, coach to coach, player to player, player to coach, coach to player. I mean, it's it's. Have there been modifications to what you're doing and in, in small tweaks, uh, or is has it stayed pretty consistent? Like last year, 2022 to the early stages here of 2023, minor things, or has there been any big shift in in, in approach? I wouldn't say there's a big shift in approach. Um, you know, we're but it's not status quo. You know, we're trying to get better, and there's little nuances that they've been coaching up and how we can you know, better some of our statistics offensively, um, you know, most notably just being very, very efficient in the run game. If we can do that, obviously we're going to be a pretty pass heavy team. Um, but when we do get our chances to run, to stay ahead of the sticks, will give us a huge advantage. And Frank does a great job with that, Zach and, and, and coach Callahan. Um, but like you said, we have all our coaches coming back. We have most of our players coming back. Uh, I think one of the biggest, uh, you know, rarest commodities in the NFL is continuity. So we have to play to that. We have to use that as an advantage. We know each other. We trust each other. We know the system. And to build off of a, you know, fairly successful year, um, you know, we're going to need to to take that and translate that into good performances on on Sunday. Man, I, I agree with, with your thought process there. I, I, there was no better feeling, in my opinion, you know, thinking back to playing days when you get in the huddle and you look at everybody in everybody's eyes, you know, the other 10 people, and it's like, we've been here before. I know I can trust you. I can trust you. I can. That's a, that's a, that's a big time feeling, man. When you've experienced it, you've been through it, you know, uh, what people can and can't, all of that, that there's, that's, there's hard to put a price tag on something like that. And you can't really, uh, you know, we, you, that's, you know, the nature of this business. I think that, that was New England's advantage for 20 years. They had 20 years of continuity to, to coach off of. And, you know, we're coming on year two of it. Um, and it, it's really serving us well so far. We are we are so much farther ahead than we were, especially as an O-line unit. 
Um, it's it's great to have you know so many guys with with so much experience. Um, obviously, a lot of guys have won before, but we haven't won it together, and that's the ultimate goal. We want to finish it off, um, and we're gonna have a tough slate, you know, starting week one. Um, and we need to, we need to go out to Cleveland and win. No doubt. I mean, you got two road uh, two uh, division games, one on the road, one at home. To start off the season, man, it'd be great to be 2-0 in that division and uh, one of them being a road contest up there in Cleveland because they're, they're, that's a good football team. And there's no two ways about that. But so are the Cincinnati Bengals. And Ted, um, be remiss uh, in, in, in really poor on my part not to give you credit for everything that you're doing in the community as well. I mean, you're, you're, you're an influence. You're a factor. You're an influencer in the locker room, on the football field, and in the community. And uh, – Tell us about what you're doing with your foundation. I know I've seen you at, at uh, you know, a couple events here in the off season. You've attended these golf tournaments. You've done a lot of things for your foundation as well. Tell us what's going on and, and how people can participate. Just give us any and all information about uh, your foundation. Yeah. So we were, we just saw you at uh, jungle to the hall at the banks. We need to get Ken and, and Willie into the hall of fame. Uh, no doubt. I believe they only said one, one bangles in the hall of fame. Is that Munoz? Anthony Munoz, and then and then Bob Trump is in the in the broadcast wing of okay. the Hall of Fame, but the only player in the in the Hall of Fame now. Ken Riley is going in uh, this year. He's going okay. to be in this year, so he is the second Bengal. And the Bengals have been around for over fifty years. Yeah, he's the second one to go into the into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Well, that's that's pretty unbelievable. But um, you know, we 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 were out there selling hats. Uh, the, you know, what we do is the Cincy hat. It's the Cincy yep. hat project. And you can find all of our products at the Cincy hat.com. Um, but what we do is uh, we provide independent living and coaching for adults with down syndrome, autism, and you know, the entire spectrum of mental disabilities. Um, and we've raised, you know, well over half million dollars. Now we were in the construction process of two apartment buildings off of hat money. And we just really appreciate everything that you know, this community has done, they've really taken to the gear and taken to the cause. And, you know, everyone in, in Indianapolis uh, is so grateful and thankful. We're going to be able to triple our footprint of people we serve. Um, and, and it's just really amazing. The organization is called the Village of Marici and is located on the east side of Indianapolis and is the only institution of its kind in the state of Indiana. So um, I'm actually going to meet with, uh, with Ken here tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and talk about he does a very similar project and they got stuff going in Cincy. My dream is to bring something like this to the town of Cincinnati because it is such an underserved need. Um, you know, many people do not consider, you know, when, when someone, you know, a lot of our clientele is, you know, 40 to 50 years old with, with parents that are they're aging or, or, or deceased and there's no one to take care of them. And right. people also under, underestimate the capabilities of these adults and with a little bit of coaching and, uh, you know, a place to live and perhaps a job we can provide. Uh, they live a very independent, normal lifestyle, and it's really, really powerful stuff. It's it's really one of the only you know times in my life where I know I'm doing the right thing, and um, very proud to be a part of it. And thank you so much to all the fans uh, and people around you know the organization and around the city and every every state, every single state has ordered a hat. So very, very uh, grateful for that. That's awesome. Yeah, Ken uh, has the Ken Anderson Alliance that you referenced. Same thing with. Autism, trying to find, you know, he's trying to build residence uh, for them here in uh, in the Cincinnati area and, and Northern Kentucky. And um, I've worked with the Down Syndrome Association for over 20 years, golf tournament and other fundraisers uh, with them. And um, it started for me at a, I was a, a day camp, I was a rifle range instructor. I dislocated my foot from my ankle, uh, had an injury and couldn't do much physically. So I was working at this rifle range at this day camp and, and, they had some kids with Down syndrome, and I just had it's it just meshed. I mean, for some reason, we we connected, and it, from that point on, just wanted to help uh, kids with uh, you know adults with with Down syndrome uh, be as productive as they possibly can, you know. And so, I've done stuff with them, and Kenny and I uh, have kind of uh, merged uh, forces as such. And you, you sound like you're gonna do the same thing. I mean. All of it's good. There's no doubt. That's uh, that's that's more than noble, and you're you're a heck of a man, Ted Karras. Really appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, Dave. Yeah, I mean, you've been a big help to us too, and you know, I'll always come on in the trenches. You know that. <laughs> you are the man. Well, this won't be the last time we'll have you. I can tell. I can promise you that right now because no you know, doubt. 
you're you're an all-time favorite guest, man. So appreciate the heck out of you and uh, who you are and what you do. Thanks, Ted. Thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.